Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I'm going to be showing you guys the SAM 4L8 Explained Pro Atmel Development Kit. This was gifted to me yesterday by Atmel when I was at the ARM Tech Con in Santa Clara, so I figured I would do an unboxing for you guys just so you can see what's inside this box. Looking at the exterior itself, it's your pretty standard glossy white dev kit box. Picture of some random robot that means nothing on the outside. On the side we've got the actual part number for it, so you can look that up online and find their store. On the back we've got your standard you know, three steps to get started, which includes installing Atmel Studio. So of course what I did was I just typed in the, key, the uh, part number and moved on with life instead of reading that. And then a whole bunch of legal jargon that doesn't make much difference to us engineers. Um, what the outside of the box doesn't have is any like actual useful information. So here is my humble addition to the box. So actually looking at any useful numbers, it's got a Cortex M4 in it. We've got 512 kilobytes of flash, 64 kilobytes of RAM, and then your general 100 pin ARM core I.O. system. So you've got four I2C, four UARTs, 80 GPIO pins, pretty much anything real standard for the 100 pin scale. All right, so let's open it up. All right, so inside the white box, we've got another one here as your standard cardboard one, um, which would be the one that you would actually reasonably ever store this in again. Since, I mean, this is this is going to get thrown away pretty much right now because I don't want to bo be bothered with that. And there's no there's no part numbers or anything on this one. All right, so first thing I'm going to need to do with this one is take a Sharpie and r scribble the actual part number on here so I can tell what the hell this is. Because this gets thrown into one of my big cases of dev kits and if I ever want to find it again, I'm going to, A, want to have all that information and B, you know, need to be able to tell what it is other than just Atmel. So, a little bit down there, but that's all right. Open it up yourself. We've got your standard welded stacked styrofoam on the right here. A couple USB cables. Um, this is probably the first dev kit I've seen that's actually gone to micro USB, so it gives you two micro USB cables. So I guess I can finally start throwing away all my mini and one micro to female USB on the go. So this actually is the first one of these adapters I've gotten, which might be useful for like my cell phone or something, but it also iterates the fact that these SAM parts can actually do USB hosting. Opening up this, I always like it when they have real nice packaging like this, because this is a bunch of free volume that I don't have to sacrifice, so these get thrown away, um, and so I finally can actually fit all these back in the box when I'm done. So, just going through the deck here, we've got the SAM 4L Explained Pro. This is the actual motherboard. And so, what we have here is four Explained Pro expansion slots, one, two, three, and four. We've got the actual chip itself, and then all the programming and debugging is on the back here. All right, so let's see if we can get you a closer view of that. All right, so again, one, two, three, four uh, ex Explain Pro expansion connectors. This is for the LCD, because the um, this part has a LCD driver in it. We've got our 32 kilohertz and our 12 megahertz crystal oscillators, a, US a user button, a reset button. Uh, one of these USB is debug. So let's see, yeah, so this one's their debug USB port, and this one's your user debug. Uh, USB port. And then we've got one Q touch sensor. So we've got a touch sensor down here, which is kind of neat. All right. And again, another 12 megahertz oscillator for your debugger back here with all your standard, you know, landing pads for that stuff. And so it's, that's, that's the basic motherboard. But like any of these systems, the real value in this development kit comes in all of the expansion boards for it. So let's start looking at those. First one, we've got your custom real high density pin here for a liquid crystal display. So that just plugs in, it's 
gendered so you can't get it wrong. So there you got a liquid crystal display that goes on there. You've then got a second display here. So we've got a organic OLED display, which these are always, I always really like these, they're real pretty. And it's got three more user buttons. Um, interestingly enough, the motherboard manual doesn't give any information about the pinouts, but there's a separate manual for each of these expansion cards. And so if you want to find out what's in this, and each one of these is identical, I believe, with power, ground, a couple PWMs, a couple um, analog IOs, a couple digi just pure digital IOs. And then what's kind of interesting is each one of these daughter cards has, oh, come on, has in it this little three pin ID chip. And so when you plug one of these cards into one of these IOs, it gets identified based on that little chip there. All right, so we've got OLED. Next one we've got is the IIO1. This is the IO1 card. And so again, it's the same standard plug on this side, and then it'll it typically would plug in somewhere like that. Looking at it, what we've got, we've got a light sensor here, we've got a user LED here, breakout for one of the serial ports here. You know, so we've got a couple headers here. And so if you wanted to hook up a serial port, you just do a two two pin female jumper there. A low pass filter here, which I couldn't quite figure out what the low pass filter was for. Um, you've got a temperature sensor here, and on the back, we've got these real nice solder jumpers here as to what address to put the temperature sensor on on the I2C bus. And then we've got a micro SD slot here, and it comes with a 2 gigabyte micro SD card. What's a little concerning is that this one doesn't even put a class on it. And that's kind of a pet peeve I've always had with these dev kits, particularly the Beagle boards. TI puts class 4 micro SD cards in these fantastic dev, dev boards so that they run like garbage because they're all I.O. bound. Right? So if you have a Beagle board or a Beagle bone at home and you're disappointed with its performance as a general system, the first thing I suggest you do, throw away the micro SD card, get a t class 10 or class U1 SD card, and you'll see the performance go up by an order of magnitude, right? And so that's the IO board. Lastly, we've got the proto board here. Um, this one I really like because, I mean, inevitably they're not gonna have the daughter board you like. And it's kind of interesting that it's got this separate power connector up here which they bring out to this whole complete row. So again, this one plugs in here. And if we zoom in on it, uh, the actual, the Explain Pro expansion header here actually runs all the way across the PCB to this set of headers here, which are all nicely silkscreen labeled, so huge points on there. Then this is your standard breadboarding area here, and then you've got power rails up here, you've got ground, and then the labels on them are like EP5VO, P5VO, and VCC. I wasn't able, to, I, just looking through the manual real quick, I wasn't able to figure out what the differences are between each of these different buses. But you've got all, all the different ones, and then you would, the concept is that you would jumper from these headers here over into, onto your devices that you have here, and you would jumper from your power buses down so that's real neat um, I didn't quite I meant to ask him about it because I didn't quite understand it but there's some sort of Molex connector here on the end that I don't know what the thought was on that I haven't found I haven't really dug around in there uh, you know in the rest of the parts other than the starter kit so I couldn't quite tell you what that's meant to be plugged into but I found it interesting that that, that isn't that is not standard male header, it's some sort of other connector. But so there we go. That's that's the explained pro development kit. The starter kit for you. 
Um, unfortunately, I was a little disappointed kind of plugging it in all like this, kind of how they had it shown at the demo at the uh, conference. It doesn't seem to have any out of the box demo or anything, so I, I'm gonna have to plug it into a computer at some point and see if see if they have sample code online that I can load up to like see what color the OLED display is and how beautiful it inevitably is going to be um, and play around with this. They've got a, a whole bunch of real nice development features for this sort of platform. So you know we've got our current sense jumper here, so you can take this out and then you put a uh, microamp meter right there. Um, voltage select, all that sort of stuff. So again, it's it's a it's a nicely thought out board. It's one of the nicer ARM microcontroller, no operating system development boards I've seen, and I'm real happy with it. So again, this has been Kenneth. Thanks a lot to Atmel for gifting me one of these dev kits. Uh, because inevitably, I never seem to win the drawings for these things, so I just stopped playing that game and um, just asked for one myself, and they said absolutely. So. They gave this to me. Um, I'm real happy with it. I'm looking forward to at some point playing around with it, probably once I finish my thesis. So, again, thanks for watching. This is Kenneth. Bye.